From the Perfected Praise Worship Center in Garland, Texas, welcome to We Are the Next Chapter with Bishop Charles Franklin sharing the Word of God to everyone. Join us now with Bishop Charles Franklin. We are the next chapter. And then to uh, Minister Shanae Rollins, amen. I believe y'all felt that in her prayer, to God be the glory. You all may be seated in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe that you all came in knowing that God is good and that you all knew that in spite of whatever happened in this morning, it seemed like the enemy was already trying to do his best to frustrate some of us, try to delay us, try to hold us back, whatever the case may be, but yet you came in the house saying, it's gonna be all right. Hallelujah, it's gonna be all right. Someone say, it's gonna be all right. Yes, it's gonna be all right. I need to know that the Lord is always with us because if you have ever experienced what the scripture you're going to find out that the lord that we serve he said that his grace is sufficient but before we move on i need to feel the lord just a little bit more amen so if i want to ask for a special request from the audio ministry if they can find us the king of glory that song by um i think her name is shania wilson I love that song because mother, I just feel that when we were in the midst of praise and worship, you all still felt that you wanted to move on the heart of God. And I felt and I saw how even the virtual family was saying, yes, move on the heart. We want the Lord's presence to be with us. And so the dancers do not have a dance before the word, but at least you can be the minister of the word, the minister of the song. But I just want us to move in the worship. You can turn it up, Deacon, before we go into the word. And I just want you all to just move and let God move on your heart. Whatever the case may be, Sister Shaquille, I just feel like we just need to let us know that he is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, he is. Every man. Every man. Thank you, Jesus. So let's start right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on. our hearts ready to give to you hallelujah lord we come into this house ready to be filled we want to give you our all in all that's why we speak it god we know that you are the king of glory we know that you're the king of peace we want you to fill us up with your power we thank you merciful lord that your sons and daughters have come into this house ready to seek after you and those of them that are watching via facebook we pray that the spirit of the living god will meet them there have your way holy spirit continue to move in the word we're ready to hear what god has to say we're ready to hear the voice of our savior have your way god as we move in the message we stand behind this most sacred desk we're not here to be in shape form or fashion but we don't come with a form of godliness but we come to move in the power of the holy ghost have your way and convict our hearts let the spirit of the lord speak to us now because god we're ready to hear what the voice of the lord has to say so we thank you god 
that you have met us in worship. We thank you, God, that you put our hearts in your hands. We thank you, God, that you move the stuff off of us. We thank you, God, that you release the pressures off of us. And now the weight of your glory, the weight of your glory is where we want to be. We praise you, we lift you up, and we magnify you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And the saints of God said, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory. You all may be seated in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I needed that. I need to have a song every now and then that you need to move on. Hallelujah. And I felt the king of glory because I feel that's the song that we all can uh, attest to that we have a God who is the king of glory because we sometimes face things that we don't want to face and we have challenges that we don't want to deal with but we know that if we have the king of glory on our side then we know that we have someone that's greater than what we can expect or imagine hallelujah and so I thank the audio ministry for having that on hand and I thank you perfected praise for being there with us. It's kind of different. You know how they used to do, I stretch my hands to thee, hallelujah, for there's no other help I know. Even then, I, I still love that one, but I felt in my spirit that we needed the King of glory this morning, amen. So to God be the glory, we bless and praise your name. We thank you so much for joining us. Those are our virtual family and friends for perfected praise that is here on this last Sunday in the month of February. Someone said, God did it. Yes, he did. He brought us through the second month of a brand new year. Someone still shout, it's still my year. Yeah, it's still my year. In spite of what Texas had to go through, we already had to go through 2020 with the COVID of all of us being affected. And then here this year, we had to experience only in the state of Texas with no power and boiling water. But someone say God is still good because those that are in the will of God and those that know the Lord to be their shepherd and know what Psalms 23 and one says did not have to fret, nor did they have to go through the wilderness of the darkness by themselves because they knew the shepherd was still on their side, amen? So even though we were cold a little bit, thank God for some blankets. Even though some of our stuff was destroyed in the mess like our armor bearer, God still made a way through. And even though we had to boil some water, we thank God for jugs of water. And even though we had to have something without just a little bit, we thank God we still had a roof over our heads. I still give God the praise because even though I may have been tightened up and my body was cold, I still knew who my helper was. And I still knew the Holy Spirit can keep me warm. So I praise God that he didn't just do it for us at the Franklin household, he did it for all of us. And so, yes, if you came in praising God, being locked up for nine days, you know God is still good because our children never got sick and our food table never ran empty and our gas tanks never left it and they became empty because the God we serve already supplied all of our needs before it happened. So someone shout, God is still good. Hallelujah. All the time, our Mabera God is still good. I know, baby. I know you got to shout. Hallelujah, you gotta let it out. You gotta praise him. To God be the glory. So I praise the name of the Lord. We give him all the credit. Hallelujah, we're giving him all the credit. Not giving no credit to no Abbott, to no Ericot, to nobody in the government. I give God the credit. He did it, hallelujah. And he will continue to do it as long as we stay in his will. Bless the name of Jesus. So we thank God again. We praise him to the overseer, the angel of this house. We bless him, praise his name. He is speaking with Shekinah glory this morning. He had to give them a word uh, in Houston, Texas. So he's already with Shekinah and he's not there. Those of them talking about, he went to Houston? No, he's on Zoom, but prophet Eddie Everline of Shekinah, he's giving them the message. So we, in his absence, we do miss our overseer, amen. And to all of the ministers, hallelujah, elder 
Pettis and Minister Rawlins, Evangelist Elect Khalila Washington, Evangelist Elect Exhorter, per excuse me, Exhorter Elect uh, Michelle Pettis. I'll get these E's, amen. And then Deacon Rawlins and Deaconess Cheryl Tubbs, hallelujah, and Minister Dejanae Little, and to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen, God does have a word, hallelujah, and we're going to let the Lord use the word, but I need the spirit of the Lord. If y'all see me push just a little too fast, y'all say, hold on, prophet, amen, and let the spirit of the Lord have his way, amen. But then if y'all see that I can't because that means that the spirit is moving, then y'all just have to say, keep a spirit, keep a, keep a, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because I heard Minister Rollins say, let the spirit of the Lord come all the way in aid on, amen. Do like Elizabeth and let just leap, hallelujah, in, in the womb. That's what we want. And, and so Elder Pettis already read our scripture, but if you would just turn, you don't have to stand Hallelujah. We're going to do 2 Corinthians again, chapter 10. But we're only going to do verses 7 through 10. Amen. And I understand, Arma Bearer, whatever the Lord does, you just continue to give him praise. Hallelujah. Continue to give him praise. Continue to give him praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name because. Sometimes we experience things in life that we didn't think we would ever experience. But when we see that we experience, which is going to be today, what Armor Bearer is going to see and not just her evangelist, some of us are going to find out that God's grace is always sufficient. Amen. And that's what we're going to have. And I'm going to read. Hallelujah. The New King James Version. And like I said, you don't have to stand. The spirit of the Lord has already been moving. We gave him praise and we bless him. And I would think the holy vessels for moving today, as you all can see, those of you looking, and uh, we had, it's our last day for Black History Month. So we're, some of us have on the pearls and Chuck Taylors to honor our very own Vice President Kamala Harris, amen. And so we wanted to honor her for black history. And then we have on just black history attire. So if you saw all the ethnic wear and everything else, we honor it because black history is not only for a month, but like it says, it's 365. Amen. So hallelujah. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. Even our own Bishop Franklin is a black history uh, legacy of his nature. Amen. And so I honor him today. And then we honor also Bishop Jack Castle, who was also a legacy because his granddaughter is here and we love him. So we want to continue to honor the legacies even throughout the year, whether they are living or deceased. They made a difference. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse number seven. And hallelujah. I said to verse number 10, but we'll be probably to verse number nine, but it's okay. And if you're one of those in the virtual world, please make sure you highlight it and listen to what the Lord says. And it says, um, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in my flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, Ariana, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. The word of God for all of God's people. Hallelujah. I want you all to look at your neighbor. And if you don't have a neighbor, if you're out there in the virtual world, hallelujah, perfected praise, then I want you to put it in the comments. Look at someone and said, I've had enough. Mm, say it again. Said, I've had enough. Amen. And you're going to find out what that means here in a little bit. Uh, there was a movie, if you all remember, with Jennifer Lopez, and she had that movie. It was called Enough. 
And remember in the movie, she had, uh, uh, she had this lifestyle that she thought was absolutely perfect. She thought it was the ideal lifestyle. She had the husband that she thought she always wanted, the home that she always thought she would imagine of. She had this perfect lifestyle of being that waitress who went from the rags to the riches type thing. And she thought, she thought, so she thought that everything was going to be uh, excellent in her world, daughter, until she she found out that her husband snapped. He ain't, he crazy. And she was like, something is not right. And then to the point that it was so bad that he was even more than what she expected. He, she found out that he was very controlling. And in, in the movie, as you all remember, he started controlling the money. He abused her. He told her she wasn't going anywhere. He told her that her child, that he would take the, their daughter away from them. And he did all types of things, Sister uh, Shaquille and Kiana, to let him know that I'm in control, as though that he was God of their life. Amen? And so she said, as she moved, she tried to hide. And every time she tried to hide, Wherever she went, wherever she tried to go, it seemed as though he found her. And it wasn't until she made up her mind that she said, I had enough that she couldn't run anymore from the battle because she knew that her husband, her past was a thorn in her flesh. And so the thorn in her flesh was buffeting her, Arma Bearer, and she said, I had enough, which means that she decided that she was going to fight instead of just run away from the pain. And sometimes, Sister Michelle, God is telling us we can't run away from the pain. Sometimes we have to fight even when we don't want to. And we have to face what we're dealing with because we don't ever know. We're thinking everything is hunky-dory, but we don't ever know when something is going to change our perspective, make us look at things differently. And we are in a place where we never been. Amen? So I want y'all to stay with me because what God is dealing with is that some of us, like what we're dealing with now, these past two weeks, is that we're finding that we're dealing with some thorn in the flesh type stuff and we're dealing with buffeting buffeting you guys are going to find out just means that they're fighting against you amen so listen i want you to understand something that there is a blessing though when we are dealing with pain when we're dealing in the pain even in the movie with jennifer lopez even though the outcome of her husband i would not recommend what the outcome was but when she finished him she got blessed because now she was at peace and sometimes we need to see the blessing in the pain sister nikki because nobody likes pain None of us want to deal with pain. None of us want to deal with the issues of pain. But I'm going to show you how that God's showing, sharing with us, just like he did with Paul in 2 Corinthians, that there is a blessing in it. Amen? So listen, there's a couple of things that I want you to understand. When we're dealing with pain, I want you to first of all know that pain comes with a personality. That's all I want you to remember. Think about everything you've gone through these past two weeks or the last two months or the month itself. Every time you dealt with the pain, it came with the personality. The pain of the personality. Pain's personality means that it nags you. All right? It nags us. It had a way of piercing you. Pain comes with a strike. It irritates us. Y'all with us? It tortures you. It came to hurt you. It came as a throbbing, it came as a throbbing uh, of flesh, something in our flesh. It aches, it flares, it itches, it burns. I don't care what it is, but I want you to understand is that no matter what the pain was, it has a personality just to do what it did, and it's coming to strike you down. Are y'all with us? So pain has the personality of torturing you. Well, that's what, that's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, that the thorn and the buffeting, the thorn in his flesh, he said, came as a sharp wooden stake to torture him. 
And then he said the word buffet meant that it came to strike him or mistreat him. So what I'm trying to get you to understand, just like Paul, is that when you are feeling the personality of pain, it is like it came to fight you with vengeance. Anytime we're experiencing anything in life that we wasn't expecting, and the moment you begin to feel uncomfortable with it, the moment that you're trying to figure out what's happening, that's the personality of pain. That's its purpose. It's there to torture you. It's there to make you uncomfortable. It's there to nag you, and it's there to irritate you. It's there to do something to you that you've never experienced before. So that's what Paul was saying, that this thorn in my flesh that was given to me came to buffet me. Now listen, when it came to Paul, some people thought that Paul's thorn was a physical thing. Some of them thought it was because he had some type of eye issue or eye disease because it says in certain scriptures, I think in Galatians 6 and 11, that he had to write big in big letters. People didn't know what Paul's thorn was. I want, I'm trying to give you a little biblical history, especially the ministers in training. All right. We don't know what the bodily presence was that made Paul weak in his flesh. I don't want y'all to get upset with that. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that whatever it was that the thing that made Paul weak in his flesh, it made him, it irritated him, it caused him in weakness where he couldn't preach and minister to the church because it was difficult for him to do. When we are in pain, Sister Nikki, when we experience a thorn in the flesh, do we not have a weakness? Does it not bring us down a little bit? We don't find ourselves having the strength to minister or to do the daily activities that we used to do. When you are experiencing some type of pain in your life, perfected praise, you get tired quicker. You don't want to deal with it any longer. You're not able to move like you used to do. And even when you try to push yourself, you push yourself, but it still seems like it's a chore to do. Are y'all still with us? One thing is for sure is that I want you to understand is that even though the thorn in the flesh from Paul, it says it was carried out by Satan, it was always conceived by God. So what I want you all to understand, the pain that you all are experiencing now, even if it looked like the enemy came in to destroy you and push you in the drowning and try to flood you out, even though it looks like the enemy did it, it was still conceived by God. Because there's nothing in our life, as long as you are in the will of God, you are not ever going to be absent of pain. We're never going to be absent of trouble. We're never going to be absent of trials. Are y'all with us? So which means that even if we're experiencing these things in the pain armor bearer, it doesn't matter what Satan does. Nothing can happen in our life without God not knowing it. Because it's always a part of his plan to make sure that we come out of it like pure gold. So personality, pain, someone say pain, has a personality. So the next time you're trying to figure out why you're not feeling good or why it's torturing you, why it's nagging you, why it's irritating you, why it's burning and itching, I don't know what it is, but someone say that's the part of pain. But it has a reason. God has given us a reason for you to go through it. Watch this. Keep, let's keep going. I want you to understand is that when we are in pain, it doesn't matter what we're dealing with. It's all part of human experience. I remember how grandma said, just keep living. Because as we grow older, we're always going to experience something else, daughter, that we've never experienced in life. And at one time, it, it seems like everything is always going good, but just keep living because as we live, scripture says in Job 14 and 1, a man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. So it doesn't matter if we're saved or unsaved, trials and pains are part of human experience. Y'all with us? But so if, if pain has a personality, then I also want you to know that pain also has a place in our life. Stay with me. So Paul said that the thorn was in his flesh, did he not? Which means that was the place. It afflicted his physical body. It was thorns and buffeting. 
it came and manifested itself in the physical realm. We don't know what the actual thorn was, but all we know is Paul said that it was a thorn in my flesh. So which means that the pain that you're experiencing, the thorn that is in your flesh, think about what it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be a physical element in your body. It could actually be something emotional. It could actually be something spiritual, which means that it could hit you in depression or loneliness. It can also be a thorn in your flesh that may have hit you with cancer, maybe diabetes, maybe it's a stuttering problem, maybe it's a lapse in memory, maybe it's an anger issue, maybe you're an overthinker, maybe you're a depressor, maybe you're an overeater. Do y'all see what God is saying? It's a thorn in your flesh. It has a place which means that it could be placed either physically in your body or it can be a place in your emotions or hinder you spiritually. So the thorn that Paul experienced had a place. If we know that pain has personality, then the pain that you're also experiencing has a place in your life. Lastly, I want you to understand is that pain is persistent. Yes, it is. It is persistent. Watch this. If you look in the scriptures again, when, when Paul said that the thorn in the flesh came to buffet me, it said that buffet, B-U-F-E-E-T, B-U-F, well, y'all know how to spell it, B-U-F-F-E-T. There we go. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. It was a verb. To buffet means that it means that it came to strike you. But watch this, in the, in the scriptures, y'all have to pay attention. It wasn't in the past. It didn't say that the thorn in the flesh buffeted me as though it happened yesterday. And it didn't say that the thorn in the flesh that Paul was experiencing was buffeting him, which means it was going to happen tomorrow. It said that it buffeted him, which means that it was in the present tense which means that when you are dealing with pain, pain is always in the present tense. I don't care what happened two weeks ago. If the pain is still nagging you now, it's still a buffet in you. Y'all with us? Because if pain is persistent, that means it's continual in its nature, which I'm trying to get you to understand that the thorn in your flesh, whatever it is, the pain that you're experiencing, it doesn't matter. It's already there nagging to irritate you. It could have happened two years ago. It could have happened two months ago. It could have happened two weeks ago. But if it's still there now, that means it's consistent. So it had a place in your life to do something for you. God put it in your life because he wanted you to understand that even though Satan had brought it about, I'm bringing it about for a reason because I need you to go through something before I can get you to something. Mm, I want y'all to understand. God usually has to move us in a different way. Sometimes we're too slow in our movement. And sometimes we don't push the way we're supposed to. And sometimes God is saying, you want me to do this for you, but yet you're moving a little too slow. So what happens is that here comes the Satan, the enemy himself, and he comes in bringing some type of pain. Well, what kind of pain? Well, some of us have experienced cancer, but yet cancer can be delivered. Some of us are experiencing lupus, but lupus can be settled in a right way. Some of us are experiencing heartache, but yet heartache can be overcome by comfort. Some of us are experiencing loneliness, but God said, I am the comforter who comforts you. What God is saying, I tried to give you some pain here, so, but I want you to know that I am your pain medication. Because when I give you a pain, when I put a thorn in your flesh, it may come from Satan, but I'm the one that's going to give you deliverance. I'm the one that's going to bring you out. Even though it has a place in your life right now, just know it couldn't have gotten there without my permission because the God that I am I would never leave you lonely nor would I forsake you someone say there's a pain in my blessing hallelujah hallelujah are you getting it yes we're going through pain happens to everybody we all gotta go through something but God is saying it can't happen unless I allow it because sometimes God wants us to see that we are more than conquerors, that we are more than what we're going through. Yes, we gotta experience it. Yes, we gotta go through it. And just like Paul, some of us are trying to figure out how long do we have to go through it? 
Because sometimes we're just like him. We prayed about it three times. But yet God never took it away. Sometimes God has to regulate our flesh. Because he's trying to tell us, I'm about to bless you in a way that you've never been blessed. Yes, you're experiencing my goodness. But I need you to be humble while you're experiencing it. Yes, you're experiencing my wonderfulness. But I need you to be humility while you're doing it. So God has to come in sometimes with a thorn in our flesh. Hallelujah. Glory. So yes, when we experience this. Sometimes the pain has to regulate our flesh. When we're regulated, niece, it says to bring under control. When something is regulated, that means it's to bring it in order. Some of us in our life is not in order. Woo, hallelujah, mother. See, when God does something, he gets our attention, especially when we're out of his will. You say, God is saying, you say you love me. You say that you want to be with me, that you want to move my heart. You confess to others that you are a Christian. You confess that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet sometimes your lifestyle is not in order. How can you bring someone to Christ when you got lesbian issues? How can you bring someone to Christ when you're cheating on your spouse? How can you bring someone to Christ when you're lying to the preacher and the man of God? How can you bring someone to Christ when you're not lined up at home? God is saying, I got to regulate your flesh sometimes. So sometimes he has to afflict us with a little bit of pain. And it may be awful for us, but yet God is saying, my grace is sufficient. So when he's regulating your flesh, it is th sent there to remind us that we are not all of that in a bag of chips. When he regulates our flesh, it is there to lift up, not to lift us up, but to lift him up. Because sometimes we lifted ourselves up too high and God is saying, I got to bring you back down. Sometimes we lifted ourselves up so high that people can't even talk to us because their nose is bleeding. But God is saying, let me show you who I am. Because if I can bring you down and humble you, then you'll remember that I am who I am. That I am the creator and the maker. I created you and sustained you. I woke you up this morning. I gave you blood in your limbs. I kept you healthy when the doctors couldn't do it. I kept you fed when your mama and them couldn't do it. I kept watch over you like a sheep that's amongst the slaughter. God said, I am who I am. And if you don't know who I am, let me show you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say enough. Hallelujah. It's not us. Who needs has enough? God says, I had enough. I've had enough of trying to push myself and show you who I am. But yet God says, I got to regulate you. So just like Paul, he had to put a thorn in our way. So that way we can see that sometimes we got to be regulated in our flesh. Y'all still with me? We're just about done. Watch this. Sometimes... When we get a thorn in the flesh, sometimes, Elder Pettis, it's to rejuvenate our faith. Because when we go through trials, Sister Shaquille, it does. When a pain comes that's so, so super hard for us to endure, we begin to lose hope. We begin to lose hope not only in ourselves, but we begin to lose hope in God. And then we begin to question, does God really love me? Is God really on my side? We begin to say, why am I going through this? Why can't I have what I can have? Why is it that I can't be better than this? And all these questions come up. But sometimes when we get a thorn, a pain, we need to understand that the only way we can be driven to God's presence is on our knees. Because see, when you go through something too hard, and you get to the point that it's too big for you to carry, then you will fall on your knees. And you will begin to cry out to God. Yeah, we try to carry it as much as we can. We try to be super moms and dads. We try to be super men and women. 
We try to let people know that I'm okay and I can get through it. But let it become such a weight that it pushes you down. You find yourself where you can't even get up sometimes in the middle of the night. And you find yourself that you have a headache each day after each day. And the weight of that issue and that pain becomes so great that it kind of bends you over a little bit. Because you're trying to figure out, why am I bent over? Because you're trying to carry a load that wasn't meant for you to carry. And so sometimes God says, I got to rejuvenate your faith a little bit with this pain in you and so the moment you try to push you think you can still carry it and you're all bent over but just like sometimes when we put a stone on our back it bends us a little more and once it bends you a little more it pushes you down until you get on your knees where you're already on your knees face down and what God is trying to say is that I need you to recognize that you come from the dust of the ground and that I'm the one that created you out of the dust God is saying just call my name baby but just bend on your knees. I know that it's hurting. God said, let me carry the weight. But he's trying to rejuvenate your faith because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the evidence of things not seen. God, I can't see you in my pain, but I know that you're there with me. God, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I know that you're going to bring me out. God, I don't know why my family is hurting, but I know you got a way of escape for us. God, I don't know why my marriage is breaking up, but I know you're going to put us back together. Why? Because God says I'm trying to rejuvenate your faith. Jesus. I am God who can do all things but fail. You keep putting trust in man. And God says man can't bring you out, but I can. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Where is your now zone faith? You confess it, so God said, tell me now what you need. Now, God, I need you to lift me up. Now, God, I need you to build me up. Now, God, I need you to heal my body. Now, God, I need you to restore my stuff. Now, God, I need a door open. Now, God, I need a home for my family. Now, God, I need my children saved. Now, God, someone shout, now, God. Now, God. Because I know you've had enough of me. I know I put you through some stuff. And God is saying, tell me what you want. And someone shout now. Oh, hallelujah. Now, God. Glory. Watch this. Be seated. Glory, hallelujah. Who bless your name, Jesus. When we get the pain, I want y'all to understand something. That when we go on in the scripture... That's why he said, Paul said, I prayed three times to God, evangelist story, for God to take it away. But God didn't take it away. Because it's amazing, it stunned me. Because all the other scriptures that we read in the Bible, it says that God is a deliverer of the righteous. And that he can deliver them out of them all. But yet, here it is with Paul, mother. Paul says, I prayed to him three times to take it away. And yet God's response, Sister Michelle, stunned me. Because he said, my grace is sufficient for you. That's not the response I think Paul was expecting. Just like some of us, we don't know how God is going to respond in our lives. But it's not always the response that we're expecting. Because sometimes God has to respond in a way to let us know that he is Alpha and Omega. That he's the beginning and the end. And so when he said to told Paul that my grace is sufficient for you, what sufficient means is that it is enough. Hmm. His grace is enough for us. What is his grace? We experienced it last two weeks. It's still enough. His grace is not just unmerited favor, but it's the influence that he has on our hearts. What he was trying to get Paul to understand, and like how he's trying to get us to understand, is that I know that you all have a big task to accomplish, but my grace is still enough for you. I know that I called you to that ministry, and yet you don't feel like you're qualified, but yet my grace is enough for you. I know you still feel weak and inferior in your body because 
because of what the affliction has come upon you. But yet my grace is enough for you. I know that sometimes you feel like you got a lack of when it comes to your home, but my grace is enough for you. I know your marriage may not be all of that and then some, but yet my grace is enough for you. Sometimes as a mama, you don't feel that you can push through it, but God said my grace is enough for you. Sometimes as a child of God, you don't think you can make it, but God says my grace is enough for you. Sometimes you gotta work two jobs just to put food on the table, but God said let my grace be enough for you. God is saying you need to tell the enemy God's grace is enough for me. Stop leaning to your own understanding. Stop holding on to your will. Even if in the midst of the pain, it hurts. It's nagging, it's irritable, it's uncomfortable. But sometimes armor bearer, just look at the situation and just say, God's grace is enough for me. That's what we need to do. Because that's what the scripture says. If you speak to this mountain, if you speak to this mountain, if you speak to your mountain, what's your mountain? Is it debt? Is your mountain loneliness? Is your mountain yourself? Is your mountain your pride? Is your mountain your healing? God says, if you speak to this mountain, it says it will be moved. Speak to your mountain and tell God, my grace is enough for you. Yes, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Your grace, God, is enough for me. That's all I need to understand. Sometimes, God, I don't know why you put me through it. But God said, just know my grace is enough for you. Woo, Jesus. Someone say hallelujah. His grace is sufficient. Because it's made perfect when we're weak. I like that, armor bearer. Because sometimes we don't want people to know when we get a little weak. But God already knows our weaknesses. <laughs> That's why Jesus came here on earth to show us that yes, he is divine in one part, but he was also human in another. Because even what he experienced here on earth is the same things that we experience. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta deal with people. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta deal with discipleship. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta put up with family. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta push and make it through life. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta help others along the way. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta show people we love them. We get a little weak sometimes when we gotta put up with ourselves. But yet Jesus in all of his glory let us know that God's grace is sufficient. Who else can die on a cross and yet love people? Who else can hang their blood and die and yet show us that grace is still sufficient? Who else can do what he did but nobody but Jesus? Because Jesus is the only reason why we're here. Woo, someone say why we're here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's because of Jesus. God brought Jesus here to show us, just like Paul, the pain that Jesus experienced was all of our sins that he bore on him. That was his pain. But yet he was able, Michelle, to able to carry a cross with all of our sins on it, able to bear it in spite of his weaknesses and carry it up Golgotha Hill. Why can we not bear the pain? And get this, dude, do you not imagine, what was it that they put on Christ's head? A crown of thorns. Those thorns wasn't his sins, those were ours. A crown of thorns was placed on Christ's head to show us that even though we experience thorns and bristles and buffeting in our own life, God is saying my grace is still sufficient. So I don't care what we're going through in 2021 perfected praise. You need to stop and stop letting the enemy put you down, making you think that you're the only one going through it, making you believe that God is not gonna bring you out because he has a way of bringing you out even when you don't know it. 
I don't know how long you're going to go through it, but just know he will do it. Because he says, I am who I am. I am the great I am. I am the alpha and omega. I am the beginning and the end. I woke you up and I can lay you down. I can pick you up and I can make you better. God says there's nobody else that can do it but me. Because I am your shepherd and you shall not be in want. Who am I? I am God. I am God all by myself. That's why I say that I am the rose of Sharon. That's why the government sits on my shoulders. That's why I am who I am. Because I can battle your battle and a thousand others. I know who Satan is. I can put him under your feet. I know his weaknesses. I know how to defeat him. Just let me be God. Someone say, let him be God. Let him be God. Enough. God said, I've had enough. Just let me do what I do. <laughs> let me do what I do. My grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Woo, hallelujah. I feel the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Y'all know I would be dancing and shouting up here. Because the God that we serve is amazing. Who oh, glory. I don't care what nobody says. I have a new outlook on life, mother, this year. I know that how 2020 was, it made it depressing. But 2021 is so much better. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. I know who saved me. I'm understanding whose blood's covering me. I'm understanding who keeps me every time. Even when I have to push through 41 years in pregnancy, I know who's sustaining me. I know who gives me strength. I know who gives my husband strength. 72 years old, but yet here he is. I know who God is for perfected praise. We were pushed down and pushed down and pushed down, but yet look where we are right now. Who else but God can give us open spaces of land? Who else but God can make all things possible? Who else but God can open a way out of no way? I know who God is. So I'm going to rejoice each time and know that his grace is sufficient for me. Ah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can rejoice all by myself because God is too good. I can rejoice all by myself. Because God is too great, I can rejoice all by myself because he does wonders. He's a miracle wonder. He's a wonder of wonders. He's God all by himself. Someone shout glory. Woo. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My foundation is set. I'm gonna shout hallelujah. My foundation is set. I'm gonna shout praise God. My foundation is set. I'm gonna shout glory to his name because I stand on the promises of God. I stand on God's shoulders. So I shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God. Woo, hallelujah. Mmm. 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 Ha. Hallelujah. Deacon, you're going to have to put that stuff out there. Perfected Praise Worship Center in our address. Because I feel the spirit of the Lord. And he's moving. Because some of us have been displaced. But yet God has never displaced you from his sight. And God said, you may have to boil your water, but I am the water who's sufficient for you. I put streams in the wilderness. I make a way in the desert. I know that you're going through. I know your family doesn't stick with you, but God said, I won't have you ignorant because I'm going to be right there with you because I know what's happening. But God says, I got your back. Just know your grace, God, is sufficient for me. And all you have to do is begin to shout and begin to praise him and the wall will come down. Someone
Someone shout! Someone shout! Someone shout! Someone shout! Shout it out! Shout your wall down! Shout it out! Shout your praise through! Shout it out! Shout! Shout it out. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. 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 Your faith is coming through. Your blessings is coming through. Someone shout now. Deacon, you hear the people, don't stop. Give them something because walls are coming down. Foundation is breaking. Things are being set up. We're not gonna let the enemy think that he got us. We're gonna let the devil know, for God I live, for God I die. I'm on God's side. God is on my side. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory. Come on. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's all right. That's all right. I had to get mine out before I move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want the Lord to know. I know your grace is sufficient.